Hello and welcome back to Views by Miss Spence Summers, the audio zine that sticks a lot of audio clips together from all the weekend's action to hopefully give you a unique insight into mountain bike events around the world. In this week's episode, photographer and all-round superfan Sven Martin is back in Tasmania at round two of the Enduro World Cup in Derby, a place famed for its slabs, long and techie trails and a rock that's painted to look like a fish. Nice. Much like last weekend in Medina, the Derby race was made up of six stages and treated the riders to some incredible Tasmanian tracks. Here's a quick run through of the top three finishers in each category. In the men's, it was Richie Rude, Slavomir Lukasic, Jesse Milamed. In the women, it was Bex Barona, Harriet Harden, Ella Connolly. And in the under 21s, it was Sasha Kim, Cooper Lowe, Lissandri Bettini. In the under 21 women, it was Aris van Leuven, Ellie Hoskin, and Leah Ladbrook. The world's best enduro races now have a bit of a break, with the next race taking place in June in Finale Liguri. I reckon that's enough rambling from me now. Here is Sven with Richie Rude, the man of the moment. Richie, we've got a couple of weeks off after this one, a couple of months off maybe. How do you uh, celebrate a reset? Oh yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to take a week off or something at least. Um, it's been a hard couple of weeks with Jared, it's been leading into the races. And, 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 and away from home for a while. Yeah, away from home from, it'll be two months in April, so yeah, definitely worth it now, it feels like it. It's paid off that coming early, making the sacrifice. Yeah, for sure, and being in the warm weather, yeah. having Jared telling you what to do. So that That's was exactly what Beck said, she just had Jared at the back of his back of her head all day today. Yeah, I had a freaking big slab at the back of my head all day. Just, <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know he's got some power to match you maybe. Oh yeah, for sure. I was thinking about him pedaling and then McKay saying Luke, Luke would just be out there just just fucking the earth as he pedaled. Fucking the earth <laughs> as he pedaled. That's so, probably uh, the best quote we've got from yeah. you in 10 years, bro. Yeah, so, yeah, hard day out there, but man, so good for the both of us. And um, kind of, I won't say last week was an anomaly, but it's kind of like almost like the usual results to some extent. Yeah, a bit more normal this weekend. Um, I think it would have been a little more normal last weekend, like if Jesse didn't have an issue. We, there was still like, us fast guys up there but yeah. yeah i mean the aussies were just like insane so that was tough but i mean yeah i think it's still good all right well and see you in finale ice cream time yeah see you there isn't that weird finale now i know finale next early season this will be hot eh? it'll be hot yeah hot, a lot of people on the beaches you know yeah, yeah. ice cream time yeah all right dude well done Perfect. so uh actually you're not even gonna go you got to get back on the downhill bike. Yeah, I think I'm going to eat some Tim Tams this week and then yeah. uh, get on the DH bike. Just get heavier, get heavier a little bit. <laughs> yeah, get on the DH bike and um, try and find some speed. <laughs> and some points. Yeah, and a little bit of points. So. Wait, you kind of ride the US jersey in Enduro, so maybe you have to run with the little the squid uh, US jersey <laughs> for yeah, your man. first World Cup. Oh, Damien would love that, just USA going on the track. <laughs> no, <yet. laughs> All right, get those points. Yeah, thanks. Can't wait to see Richie on a downhill bike again. Up next with Sven is Richie's teammate, Bex Verona, who left everything out on track to take the win in Derby. Um, the time is now. The time is now. So you just said you thought it would have been last weekend and here it is this weekend. Yeah, like I thought the trails last weekend in Medina would have been more my jam, but yeah, like obviously I'm pretty hard on the pedals because we had a lot of pedally stages today and honestly I enjoyed it. Yeah. Weirdly. And the practice, did you enjoy that? I love the practice, yeah, just like, just like a duck in the water. <laughs> it's so good. So is that training paying off or just long time coming? Well, I, I mean, my preparation for these two races it's building a kitchen. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> building my kitchen. But it, was, it wasn't the best. I like, I had a bit of a face slam like a month yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So I've just been hanging out at Jared's, not doing heaps of training. But I think just being around like the boys and just Jared, like honestly, the whole way around today, I had yeah. Jared in my brain just going, better. <laughs> like it, I could just hear him, and yeah, I feel like hopefully they've done him proud and. Well, he's obviously pulled the whole team together because all of you guys did it. Yeah, insane. Like, unreal to see the boys who want to. Mint. Like, Slavomir has been so on it all week. Like, and pulling Rich, like, Richie and Slav together are, like, I think, pushing each other up. So, two of the most talkative guys in the EW. Yeah, yeah. yeah dinners, are pretty, dinners are pretty noisy <laughs> <laughs> in the Yeti house. It's pretty much just me trying shit. <laughs> That's why I enjoy the word. Well, yeah, what do you, how are you going to celebrate? Because there's, there's a long gap now. There is, yeah. Honestly, I've been out for two months now in Australia, so I'm I'm Ready buzzing to, to get home. Yeah. yeah, probably like I don't know, knock another kitchen out, maybe do a bathroom renovation. Yeah. <laughs> what are your rates? <laughs> yeah. A lot more now. Yeah, yeah. Right, I enjoyed. Nice one. Thanks. Nice stuff from Bex, who now goes into the next race as the series leader. Sven now talks to Matthew Fairbrother, an amazing guy who's riding between each EDR race, covering some serious mileage. Is Sven? 
You guys will remember Matthew Fairbrother from last year's feats, heroics, craziness. Um, and none without a twist. Uh, riding between Medina and Derby. What are the stats of the, of the last... Yeah, what did um, you do? Give, give us a bit of a brief rundown and there was a bit of a... Went for a bit of a marathon. Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't that far. I think 400 in total, maybe just under. Yeah, so you took the long um, way. You didn't even take the quick way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Went, went via the coast just purely because there were more towns. And more rain, eh? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Rain the whole time. It, was uh, it was super wet. It yeah. didn't didn't give up. Yeah. <laughs> and with your dad, but not riding with your dad, eh? He did, he's on the same mission. Yeah. So he was. We were all meant to stick together, but uh, he just couldn't keep up. Yeah. <laughs> so I left him behind at like, I'd say nine p.m. last night. But I heard sometime later on you had like snapped a chain or no chain and had to run forty k. Yeah, at about eleven p.m. last night I snapped my chain. Yeah, how do you snap um, a chain on like just massive, massive horsepower on the road? Eh? I damaged it in Medina. Okay. Um, I thought it was going to be fine, but it wasn't fine. Yeah, obviously. And yeah. then it, then it gave out, and then I didn't have a chain tool or spear mast. Oh yeah, didn't have a spear mast link either. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know, the only option was just to head to the closest town that had a bike shop, which was St. Helens. Yeah. And that was 45 kilometres away. And you, that was all by foot and scooting. Yeah, that was, yeah, all by, all by foot. foot. <laughs> and, and if someone wants to, like, give you a lift, you're, not, you're going to turn it down, even though your bike uh, doesn't roll? Or what would you do? Well, I don't know. Well, in this circumstance, it was, like, the middle of the night. I think only two cars passed me okay. the whole time. Um, but I don't know. So another story, another one for the memory. Yeah, banks. yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that again, though. Yeah, you've done that. <laughs> yeah, checked it checked off. off. All right, man. Well, good luck this weekend. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Fair play to Matthew. Sounds like an amazing adventure. He wrote a piece for our 2022 EWS yearbook, the world stage, by the way. Cheers for that, Matthew. Ella Connolly is with Sven now. She was one of three Brits on the podium in Derby, and I've managed to nab another third on Saturday to equal her result from round one. So, Ella. Uh, Three, um, can I, can I say Brits or will you get upset? Yeah, no, we're all British. Yeah, you're all British, all right? Yeah. Three of you on the, on the podium, that's, uh, that says something, huh? Yeah, no, it feels pretty special to be up there with those girls, to be honest, it's nice. You say up there with those girls, do you see them like, like, you've won? Yeah, yeah. But you obviously look up to those two. Those two. For sure, I think it's so cool that there's like so many women at the moment that could win. So yeah. like, I have respect for all of the women that I'm racing against and I'm yeah, really, really stoked for Bex today. Yeah, it was a long time coming. Yeah. Best and worst stage? Best stage, Trouty, that was so cool. Like, what, what makes it so good? Short like, and slabby and crowds? Yeah, yeah. The, the crowds were just insane. Like, I didn't expect that to come into like, all the rock sections and there'd be so much noise. Um, and it points all the way downhill. Worst stage? Stage one or stage two, they were so flat. flat. Oh my goodness. That, was, was, that like, was our media guy's like favorite stage because we felt that like, real good. Then. Oh, it was horrible. You're on e-bikes. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Um, did you did you get any of the, the silent treatment from the crowds? You know, they do different things for different no, people. No, I didn't. And I'm so glad that I didn't because <laughs> I, I hate it when you're trying really hard going past and like people are quiet to so, know I did not experience silent treatment right, today. Good. Yeah. But maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are you going to do in this break? It's quite a long break before finale. We're off to California now. Um, a bit of riding, go to sea after yeah, racing dual slalom. West Coast hip hop. Exactly, yeah. Snoop Dogg. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. If I can chill out for a while. Chillaxing. Yeah, and then and then back into the training after. Seattle slalom. What else can you do in Seattle? Everything, I think. Like, may as well use it I as think training, the downhill but... is like way more physical than, than stage one. Oh, I might change my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just slalom. You guys have a smaller bike? Yeah, we're getting smaller bikes, aren't they? Maybe around to that race. small bike with For sure. Yeah. Good, good job. Thank you. Keep an eye out for Ella at Sea Otter in California. It'll be cool to see her racing dual slalom there. Another Yeti Fox factory team member, Slavomir Lukasik is with Sven. Having battled with Richie Rude all day for the race lead, Slavomir eventually settled for second place. Man, what a day. What a day, what a day, I'm what a, what so a, what a week, yeah. what a two weeks, yeah. Yeah, that's true, the first race was uh, like uh, too much stress for me, like the yeah, new, team. New, new team, new bike, everything was new, so I don't feel good on the on the run, but here I felt like really comfortable, so I was not thinking about the, like everything around, just focus for the race and 
And it was good. It was good. A lot of power in your oh, yeah. legs. Oh, yeah. What are, what are some stats? Do you have the numbers for us? People no. People want to know. Uh, Keep those quiet. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not quiet. Uh, on my Strava is everything uh, yeah. public, but I don't have the power meter uh, now. Did you uh, think you could catch Richie, the other powerful guy on the circuit? Oh, can be, can be. Can we, be are, we are, we are, we are close. Gap, what was the gap today? <laughs> hmm? uh, how, what was the gap today? Oh, it was like at the end was seven, seven seconds. Okay. So yeah, it was was a little bit uh, like. A, Quite but a lot. big gap behind you, so rather yeah, safe yeah, yeah. on the last stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like, honestly, I, I feel better on the, uh, on the flat, uh, like flat yeah. pedal track, so yeah. I know I can push uh, really hard here, so, so I'm stoked for that. Well done, enjoy the win, and Thank well you. done to all of you guys. Thank you. Good one, dude. Cheers, Sven. Hopefully we'll see more of Slav Doc on the podium again this season. Harriet Harden just missed out on the win this weekend, but she seems to have found her race pace, finishing second in Derby. Harry, uh, another podium, another race. Yeah, uh, very excited. It was uh, close, but you also had a crash on the last stage. Yeah, like midday we were 0.1 of a second apart, and then really? last stage we were 0.9. 0.9? Is that, isn't yeah. that incredible, though? It's and You guys sick. can ride like so differently on such crazy tracks with so many lines. And that's how close you are. Yeah, and then like we were swapping each stage, like I'd win one, she'd win, uh, Bex would win yeah. one, and yeah, it was super exciting. And then just decided to lay it down at the top of stage six. So yeah, a little bit gutted, but at the same time, it's nice to be back up there. Yeah, um, and like brakes pushed down and all the rest. Yeah, brake got pushed down in my crash, so kind of one brake all the way down, but. Yeah, just went with it and gave it everything. So now, I don't want to say you were doing the man's line on stage one <laughs> because it's not the man's line because you were doing it. But um, pretty gnarly spot. It took Remy Galvin out of the race. Really? Um, yeah. Shit. And you didn't even like, you just rolled in. It looked like you rolled into it, not blind because you knew where you were going. But in training, it was like you didn't even fuck around you just went and did it yeah excuse, I, the, excuse the point sorry no. <laughs> I, just, I should speak better i got some i got one of the boys to tow me into it and yeah. like capable of riding it so i was like right just got to do it and it's a lot not as hard as you think so i was oh uh, yeah i was pleased i kind of remembered how to ride a bike <laughs> you remember how to ride. anyway um so you what are you gonna do between now and finale that's a bit of a break uh yeah i'm doing a bit of down a racing in the uk just because we don't have any enduros on so just a bit UK downhill. If you do, are you going to go to that Fort William uh, BDS? And do you want to race World Champs downhill? Is this what, what yeah. you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to race wow. the BDS. Um, and then, yeah, maybe go to Worlds. We'll see. It'll, I mean, be it'd be cool to be a part of it. And like, since there's no home. Enduro Worlds especially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's a home world, so always want to be part of it. Yeah. I say do it. Yeah. Good luck. See you Thank there. Thank you. Cheers. Very excited for a Fort William World Champs this year and looking forward to potentially seeing Harriet there racing. The true mountain bike pioneer and legend Glenn Jacobs chats with Sven about how mountain biking has helped to grow Derby and why it is such an incredible place to ride. So Glenn, um, how does it feel watching that go down when you, I, I mean I'm pretty much, I'm not going to say single-handedly credit you to this because some people had vision to get you to come here, but um, I mean wow. Yeah, mate. It, absolutely beautiful. It's like anything, you know, it's like the recipe. You get the right ingredients, you put it all together in Derby and this area certainly had the right ingredients, you know, and we've what, got what, a few good chefs on board. What are what are the right ingredients? Like you have like a checklist kind of in your head and... Yeah, it's a bulletproof checklist, you know. So and it's, you want, can you share that or is that kind of something that other trail companies don't want to know or like you want to let us know? Well, look, it, it's... Uh, no, no, it's, it, it's, it's a bit of IP, but you know what? It's for the world, you know. Yeah. And it's uh, and it works. Look, there's six boxes you got to tick. Yeah. The first one is connectivity. Connectivity yeah. to an airport. Connectivity to your hotel room, to your cafe, to the trails. Yeah. Everything's got to be reasonably yeah. close. Within, you know. Yeah. yeah. So the UCI back in the day when I worked for the UCI it was an hour and a half. Yeah. From an airport. Exactly. And that's no more than that. You yeah, know, exactly. to, for a major event. You know. Yeah. So, but then you come into your hotels and everything really close. You got to look at the trails. You wake up in the morning and you can see the trails out exactly. there and uh, have a coffee and all that. Second one is amazing scenery, uh, amazing terrain. Yeah. You know, landscape, escarpments, waterfall. You know, but no one would have no one would have envisioned world class trails with so little elevation here. Like how did what, how did you know what you had? Well, there's a sweet spot. Yeah, because a thousand's too much. Yeah, for pet, yeah, for pet, otherwise you need to lift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're going for it. Like nothing. Like 
if we had two thousand or a thousand, that's fantastic. Yeah. But the sweet spot is around between three fifty and five fifty. Okay, that's because that way you have either a chairlift or uh, or shuttles. You're not all day going up and down on them, and you know you, you go up and you ride down, and it's like a fifteen minute descent or a twelve minute descent yeah. or something like that, and you get back on and go up. Yeah. Now you don't want to be like. For a wilderness trail, maybe half an hour descent or more. That's great, but not for a repeat, repeat. And you said you said mm. shuttles, but it's almost nice that the shuttles here don't go to the very top, because you guys have got some of the best climbing trails I've seen in any bike park. Well, if we could, we would take them to the top. But yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I'm sure they would like. But then the e-bike shops, who doesn't like? Yeah, exactly. Them? Yeah. Well, we have a thing called CRC, which climb, rest, climb. Yeah. So while yeah. you ride, while you climb, you rest, yeah, yeah. and then you climb a bit more, and then you rest. You know, and uh, that's really funky. You know, but that's part of the second. That's part of the third. You know, the second one is just beautiful. Everything. Yeah. You know. So the third one is great trails. Yeah. The trails have to be really, really good. They have to be sustainable. They have to be great at your level and a beginner's level. And you know. Everybody has to ride the trails and get something from themselves. Nothing worse than coming out of the bottom of a trail going, oh, I'm a shit rider. No, no, that was a shit trail. You know, you, you've got to, you, you you really got to feel do happy about yourself. You really do feel like you're a good rider when you ride here. And there's something, yeah. even on the blue trails, you've got like bonus kickers off to the side that make like rollers into doubles or triples. Exactly, yeah. Look, trajectory is very, very important. Uh, predictability and online trajectory, you know. Yeah. Um, so you, you've got this. The biggest thing in our sport is progression. Yeah. You know how many times uh, you know somebody's taken their girlfriend out for a ride yeah. for the first time and they come back with a broken wrist. You know yeah, they're yeah. taking on something that's really hard. That's yeah. called force. You know you don't want no, no force risk. Yeah. You don't want to be pushing somebody into a risky situation. So if you build a trail that is welcoming and you then on the sideline you go oh, actually I might try that little hip over here. I might try yeah, that progressive yeah. expansion. Oh, right, yeah. You progress yourself gradually. You're not being forced into some dirty big old drop. You yeah. still have those things on the trails but you actually help people get to where they should go by yeah. having these little things. That's the trails. So you got to ha- and you, the trails have to be f- for everybody. Yeah. And there's got to be something for everybody in every style of trail from airflows to uh, gravity to wilderness. Something yeah. for, it's like a dirty big old shopping center. You yeah, go yeah. in there and there's something for everybody, right. you know. And the next one is uh, cafes, pubs, accommodation, you know. Um, this is number four, number four. This is number four. This, is number four. Yeah, this yeah. is number four, yeah. Because uh, you've got to have something, even if they don't exist, like Derby, it didn't even exist. It does now. But you, the key just had to be turned on, yeah. you know. So, uh, and, and that, um, uh, so you have all these things in place within that really close area and stuff like that, but um, within clo- clo- really close to the trails. But that also opens up to the, the, uh, the fifth one, which is progressive. Uh, injections like people seeing something from the outside they look at this place and going hey this is going really well i reckon i put a i could put a floating sauna here or yeah. or we could put a, a really nice uh, microbrewery here and stuff like that people get in and, and grow the town yeah. they have some vision they have some uh, so if you if you can actually allow that to grow in a town and the other thing is with that progressive uh, expansion and stuff like that is basically um if you design a hundred or so k a trail on an island mm. and it was really successful where do you where can you grow more so you can't have any boundaries and say oh this is all the only area right. six kilometers by four kilometers we can't expand from here yeah. so it's really popular we want to chuck another 50 car trails here you can you go up to the next ridge and next mountain and we've had new trails this race as well exactly that's it and then the fifth one i mean sorry the sixth one is what i said the circus yeah. <clears throat> and i don't mean that in a derogatory way it's like you're bringing the circus of events to town yeah. If you build it, yeah, the, yeah, you build the trails that you can fit five outside broadcast trucks back in the day. You know, yeah, you can yeah, look at yeah. this and go, when we when we evaluate an area, go, okay, can we close the main street and is there a bypass going around for everybody? Yeah. Can you put, um, you know, marquees for 10,000 people in that cricket ground? Yeah. Can you have this and that? We always look at that. So the circus comes along and then, sorry, you design the trails. So they just, yeah. every tra- everyday trails that people ride, yeah. but you can come and drop an international event over it. Yeah. And they run the same trails and they pick up and go away. And the, the riders, who are pro riders, are really happy with those trails. Exactly. Yeah. And that really comes down to that wheels on the ground, air or in the air, you know. And you also said, like, uh, you roll in here and you oh. park your car and you don't touch your car again for four or five days. Ski resorts did it 80 years ago. Yeah. They went through the same thing we're going through now. Yeah. You park your car, you ride for seven days... And you come back and there's your car just sitting there and think, yeah, all right, I'm going now. And you go, and now there's shuttles from the airports and things like that. But one of the most major things, one of the, the most key ingredients is start with a smile. Uh, start with a coffee and finish with a smile. Start with a, you know, start, yeah, yeah. start at the your beginning of the day, start with a coffee or finish with a beer. But you roll in. You don't climb up. 
you roll down from a hill and roll straight into a bar. Right or straight exactly. into That's the best way to end any ride. That's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. And um, where's the next Medina? We've seen uh, a little bit of snippets from coming out of Norway. That looks pretty, pretty amazing. That is the big one, yeah. Look, uh, um, it's another five years yet. We got, we're three years into it already. Uh, we're planning that to be the largest mountain bike destination in Europe. All the chairlifts have got to be, all the gondolas have got to go in, the town's getting built. The beautiful thing about that is the terrain, it's got great elevation, more lakes and more waterfalls per square kilometre than anywhere else I've seen in the world, and moose, yeah. a lot of moose. <laughs> um, but also, look, um, it's... Uh, um, just the way the town's growing, uh, we got in on the first level with the ski design, the, the ski people, yeah. the designers. It's not like we're trying to retrofit trails onto a ski right. resort. So you guys we're, are laying down. The... We're side by side. Can I have that hill over here? I'd like that escarpment there. They'll say, oh, can I use that escarpment if we put the tower over there and you can use that for trails, you know? Yeah. So it's a really good backwards and forwards. And uh, the, our client over there is amazing. And uh, huge rock slabs, massive stuff. We've already got probably 60 to 70 percent uh, EDR wow. trails ready to go you know and and what is it with the Australia that you guys there's a couple of good well-known trail building companies mm. that are doing things on a big scale on a governmental scale mm. like why have you guys like what you've obviously why is no one else <laughs> doing it so well <laughs> yeah, yeah. why are you going to Norway you know what I mean <laughs> yeah well look uh, you know it's uh um, you know, you build I mean, a house. It's awesome that you are. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, you know, you, you do your um, display home. Yeah. Right? Derby's a display home. If you're a house builder, yeah, you exactly, do a display exactly, home and go, yeah. come and have a look at this, you know. Yeah, yeah. But look, I've been doing... And Simon's got Medina and that's yeah, his display yeah, home. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, look, um, there's 54 trail building companies, mountain bike trail building, not yeah. hiking, mountain bike trail building companies in Australia alone, wow. right? And that could be one person, it could be two, three, four, and you get up to our size. And we're probably... You know, we would have to be one of the... Oh, well, we're, in the world, we're probably one of the biggest because yeah. we've done every type of terrain, every type of... Yeah. You know, uh, and, and that's a really good, fun thing is that we've built, you know, all these World Cups and, you know, all these types of events around the world. Um, and we've tried done it in, in all different types of soil and, and, and different types of terrain. So we've skilled ourselves. Know we know what, what works and what doesn't do. work, you know. But in Australia, it's extremely healthy. We've been banging on the government store for 25 years... 30 years saying mountain bike, mountain bike, mountain bike, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it, mountain yeah. bikes. Yeah. They're real. And the Australian government is um, just, yeah, yeah, and they're coming in and they can see it as a, it's a, it's low-hanging fruit when they look at going, okay, where, what will we spend this $50 million on? Yeah. They'll look at a few things and go, hey, mountain bike works. Yeah. Look at Derby. Look yeah. what's happened in Derby, you know. Yeah. And, then and, and, go, and for the whole economical impact yeah. assessment for the whole region you know yeah well you know you buy a house here for 50 grand 10 years ago and now it's uh, 1.3 million dollars you know how many how many blocks of land did you buy when you no it? well that's a really good thing everybody asks us that and um uh, much to you know um you know other people's probably disgrace that we never bought a single thing so you know insider trading from you i hate it i hate that because oh. you know what i believe in people i want other people to believe in the dream because if you go and purchase everything yeah yeah exactly. and then you you own it all and everything yeah you make a lot of money but nobody else is coming along for the ride yeah. you have all these people investing in the town that have all these different ideas most of them are great yeah. you know and that means this is why derby's like that because you've got so many people loving it you know and just building Anyway, thank you very much. Yeah. And I'm sure Derby thanks you and uh, can't wait to be back to Tassie. Thanks, mate. Always good to see you. And Norway in a couple of years, yeah, eh? Norway, <laughs> hey, thanks for your art, mate. One inspirational guy. I'm also very interested to see what this Norway project is. The three amigos, Ed Masters, Dean Lucas and Matt Walker, give Sven an overview of their past couple of weeks in Tasmania. Matt and Ed rounded out the top 10, finishing 9th and 10th, while Downhill and Dean ended the day in a respectable 33rd. All right, boys. We'll call this the... The Three Amigos. The Three Amigos, the fun the fun boys. Uh, Eddie, how was it? Um, it had flashes <laughs> of brilliance, a fair amount of what the fuck, and, uh, excuse my French, a little bit of get fuck thrown in there. <laughs> what was the get fuck? Is that the peddling? <laughs> nah, just some of the... Good. Yeah, I was good on the peddling ones, but yeah, I still didn't right. really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and there were some real sick ones, and thankfully the Tasmanian crowd... Uh, Made it a great day, because it was epic. It was, it was we, epic. we were riding past the crowd. Your shirt says thrills, some kind of paradise. Yeah, dollar bill, thrills, spells and dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. Do you know? 
Well, after stage one, I was pretty ready to pack it up, hey. That was so bad. I finished, I felt like a pack a day smoker after that one. Those gym selfies with the deadlifts, with the girls in the background. Yeah, maybe I need yeah. to do more, yeah. Stop looking and start training a bit harder. Yeah, but yeah the first one was a burner, but then the rest, three were, the rest were pretty good. Gross, really gnarly. Yeah, yeah, we'll take that. That felt pretty good considering like last one I did got like 60th or something. So we dropped down. 33rd. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's almost like after the fast women. So you're yeah. from slow that's man. Those yeah, yeah, yeah. Rows. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Jack Moy got me though, so he'll take home the Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, 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 so I've lost my cat, but you know, that happens. You lost your cat. Matt Waxer? Like it's past 80 on the last stage, eh? Yeah, just had to be done, you know. I I thought I was riding shit all day, so if you're riding shit, you may as well pedal. And that one had a lot of pedaling, so I was just like, well, only one thing left to do, and that's just destroy yourself on the pedals. Um, Gave it a nudge. Richie said, Slavomir fucks the ground when he pedals. That was like literally the quote of the day. I believe it, man. You should have seen him at the top. I'm like, I'm like... <laughs> Slavomir destroy. He's <laughs> kind of scary. Yeah. Like he's getting well, he's really just, intense. He's downloading the stages off his phone into his brain every stage. He's like tuk, 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 tuk. <laughs> downloading. Uh, what else is like a highlight from his last two weeks? Um, ah, just sick times traveling Tasmania, surfing. Nah, it's been pretty epic. Yeah. Bit cold, bit wet, but you know, a bit of adversity. Freezing this morning. Do you, you see the ice? Do you guys have ice down here? Yeah, the wind is on the ice. Ice. You guys said the AC turned on. We're in Australia. He, they smoke heaps of ice here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to drive the whole way here with the head out the window because I couldn't see shit out the windshield. And then my eyes got watered, and yeah, and that was. So, oh, so you were like driving like me then? Yeah. <laughs> you drive, like, yeah driving like you ride. I couldn't see shit at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, well. Um, yeah, what do you guys do between now and finale? Pardon? What do you do between now and finale? Uh, <laughs> my gym in Queensland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to go to the Gold Coast and train for enduro. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> it's paying off, man. It's yeah. half my thing. What did yeah, you do yeah. today? Uh, Seven, six. I reckon I half mine if we if we're based on Kanazai. Yeah, we'll half that again. Mm. Yeah. See in Queensland. Yeah. Oh, His like, result. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, right, a dead horse now. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, that's all. Well, that is round two of the Enduro World Cup in the books. Another great success for the UCI Mountain Bike World Series and Enduro Racing. Thank you to Sven again for the great interviews from Tazzy. We've now got a little bit of a break from racing until round three in Finale Liguri in June. However, Crankworx is on its way in May, so be sure to watch some of that. If you're lucky enough to be in or around Finale for round three, make sure to swing by the Miss Bunt Summers HQ, aka Finale Workspace. We do have an open door policy, so please drop in for a cuffer or rent a desk if you need somewhere to work. Time for some thank yous. Firstly, a big thank you to anyone that has made it this far through our audio zine. We appreciate you listening and hope that you are enjoying views so far. Thank you to Seb, Boris and Sven for being out in Derby documenting all the racing and non-racing action for our website, newsletters and our 2023 World Stage Yearbook. Also, just a reminder to go and watch Cosmic, our Enduro space-themed film, which is available to watch for free on our website or YouTube if you fancy a recap of the 2022 EWS season. Don't forget that if you like what we do at Misspent Summers, you can help support us by spreading the word, buying anything from our store or simply hitting the donate button at the footer of our website and i hope you enjoyed episode two of views please do let us know what you think about it or whether you have any ideas for the audio zine maybe we could do a live broadcast in finale who knows and we will see you back here in a couple of months around three of the uci enduro mountain bike world cup series christ that's still a mouthful